Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I have a very special video for you guys. I have a guest with me for the video. This is my friend Jordan. Um, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that Jordan and I are doing a podcast together um, called Home Addressed. And I've talked about it on here before, but basically we just talk about design and styling your home and finding your design style, interior decor style, all that stuff. Um, and we've just recorded the fourth episode and we're about to record our fifth episode. And the fifth episode is about thrifting and I think we're gonna call it sharing all of our top secret- Our top secret thrifting, thrifting tips. tips. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, well, first of all, if you haven't listened to the podcast, you should. And if you don't follow Jordan on Instagram, you should. What is your Instagram handle? Jordan Fairchild and that's J-O-U-R-D-A-N. Yes, it's just at Jordan Fairchild. Um, but anyway, so yeah, today is going to be a Thrift With Me video, but also it's going to be a little bit of a different style because we're going to be giving you guys some advice on how to thrift and how we thrift and what we find helpful when we're thrifting. We're going to go to three different places today. What places are we We're going to go to uh, a, a really like, you have to dig through kind of Goodwill habitat. Like a classic like a, grungy thrift store. Grungy grunge. Yeah. And then we're going to go to a... Um, What's after that? Three levels. A, a, an antique store. Oh, like an antique mall. Mm -hmm. So it's like an really dated. Mall. There are booths, but they're dated. You still have to dig, but you it's a little, dig. it's slightly curated. Right, it's not so, it's a little more clean. Mm -hmm. And the prices are a little higher. And then also to a consignment store where it's, yes. it's more, um, you're paying for someone else's curation mm -hmm. of the items. So it's, a, it's even easier, but you're paying for someone else's who's done done the some of the work yeah. for you at least um so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to those three places and we'll show you kind of what we either are gonna buy mm -hmm. or would buy and tell you some tips as well jordan is um an interior designer she's been doing design for five years but with a related you've been experience doing before all that, that stuff yeah. for a long yeah. time yeah. she was like an editor of different design magazines and all that stuff so um, she has a lot of experience, so basically you guys should listen But to you're the thrifter, <laughs> but Margo's the frequent th th thrifter, so yeah, it's so going to be interesting for, to have both of us. Both perspectives, and I think it'll be really fun. So yeah, let's get into the thrifting, and we'll talk to you guys when we get to the first thrift store. I think we're going to go to Habitat. Either Habitat or Goodwill. Okay, awesome. So we're going to head to, I think we're heading to a Goodwill right now, um, and we were just talking about kind of like the stuff that we do when we go in to a Goodwill to thrift. Obviously, I would say Goodwill is probably where I do most of my thrifting, um, just on a day-to-day -day basis, because they're easy to run in and out of. And I, it's become easy for me to do a quick scan and be able to tell if, any, if like I'm gonna find good stuff or not. But Jordan was just saying, like you can go in with a plan, you can go in with a list of stuff that you wanna find, which is always really helpful, but with Goodwill, you kind of have to like not expect mm -hmm. anything and just be willing to get what's good there at that moment. Yeah, I think that they, um, the secret is out <laughs> that they exist. I just think there, there are so many people shopping them mm -hmm. nowadays. There's so many pickers and you just have to go in with an open mind and know what you're looking for and know how to do it sort of speedy if you want it to be a part of your life. Yeah. So. I think or just know that you're not going to get anything too. Yeah. Have be okay with also like leaving without anything. Yeah. I think that's something when I first started thrifting, mm -hmm. I like felt like I mm -hmm. had to get something to make it worth it. And now mm -hmm. I've gotten to the point where I'm like, if I don't find anything, that's fine. One of the things that I do, this is more for like clothing or um, fabrics and things like that. When you're going into a Goodwill, just look for particular textures mm -hmm. and particular mm -hmm. patterns that jump out to you instead of having to pull, like I rarely will go if I'm thrifting for clothes and pull out every single piece and look at it. Like yeah. I'll quickly scan yes, yes, and look for a pattern or a texture that I like. Same thing with um, when mm -hmm. you're going through those, like the shelves that are super crammed with like glassware and dishes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll keep an eye out for like mm -hmm. a color that I'm looking for. So if I see something that has like a blue in it, I'll just go look at that piece. It's like good to remind yourself to have certain things to look out for so that you're not having to scan every single item. And you might miss stuff. That's, I mean, that's gonna happen regardless. But like saying, okay, 
I'm gonna like keep an eye out for anything that's like a blue dish or has like a red accent and then you just like look at that specific piece. I think that's really helpful. And you're also always gonna wanna look for tags, mm -hmm. uh, materials. You're looking for natural materials and clothing. Do not, they're, look, mm -hmm. our clothes today are made with so much plastic. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for the, the wools, the linens, you know, items that were made before we started. And if you're not, I feel like you and I are probably at a point where now we can like feel mm -hmm. a material and tell mm -hmm. what's in it to mm -hmm. some extent. Mm -hmm. But if you're not at that point yet, then yeah, just look at the tag, just look at the mm -hmm. material content and it'll tell you. Same thing with like bowls and dishes. Um, you always want to look for the higher quality stuff, right? So if it has, if it's like an antique porcelain or if it's a, yeah if it's a piece of china and you look on the bottom and it has a stamp you can kind of tell the age of the item based mm -hmm. on what the stamp looks like if it looks like it's really old or if it looks like it's um like been new or you yeah know, vintage or you know recently produced the other thing too i think when you're in goodwill and looking for antique and vintage items you kind of want to look for things that are still high quality even though they're vintage I think sometimes I fall mm -hmm. into the trap of wanting to buy something just because it's old and I think still keeping it in the back of your mind like is this damaged does this have a crack is it still usable and not not even in the sense of like usable like can I use yeah. the dish yeah yeah it's like is it usable for as decor I mean, it's the DMV it's what we talked about on our podcast right. you're essentially I, what I call the DMV test is it durable does it bring meaning this mm -hmm. is like editing down things you already own but you also should keep this in mind when as you're shopping. You're shopping is it durable is it meaningful or sentimental and is it versatile can I you can I actually use it in my home and how would I actually mm -hmm. practically use it so practical and pretty you mm -hmm. really want to think about I think practical and pretty is a good but at a goodwill as opposed to maybe some of the other places we go to if you like it then buy it buy it's it. gonna you don't have to really I think wrestle that's one with of the price. Top tips. yeah <laughs> because it's gonna be so cheap generally mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like don't count on it being there the next day because no. it's almost guaranteed no. that it won't so yes. go ahead and get it yeah i think that's one of buy the what you love tips. but anyways we're outside of a thrift store right now we're gonna go in and look around see what we can find and we'll kind of like maybe talk through some of the stuff mm -hmm. as we're showing you what mm -hmm. we're looking at oh they have the little, little gravy oh, oh, is that an M? M. oh my gosh i should get those yes Dollar. Those are really cute. Oh, and you can tell that they're antique. Yeah. Because oh, wait. Oh, Margo. oh my gosh. Oh my god. There's oh my god, the whole thing. Oh my god. <gasps> okay, I need to get those. You have to get all these. <laughs> no, no, I'm screwed. I have to get them all. I mean This is kind of cute. <laughs> you always have to dance too. It helps the shopping. <laughs> Ooh, I actually kind of like the a little bit. That pear. Oh yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty. Oh, With the marbly, nice. yeah. These are neat. Oh my, oh my. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. 
Alright, we are here at Goodwill. Let's do it. And we're gonna go in and see what we can find and we will try to talk you through stuff in the moment if we can, but also we might not be able to. This is a very <laughs> Ooh, this is a cool shape. chair. Mm -hmm. This Goodwill is very like neat. This isn't normally what I experience at Goodwill. <laughs> but it has the same smell. Yeah, it does. Okay. Oh, see like this. I noticed the blue immediately. <laughs> oh, I don't love it, but it's like still a cute little. Scanning, scanning. Oh, this feels like you. Like that. It's cute. I normally won't buy. See, that doesn't look old. That looks like 80s to me. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, some Fine. old. I probably wouldn't buy something that didn't have a complete set mm -hmm. unless it was really, really special. Okay. This is pretty. And you can tell that's really old. Oh. <laughs> Don't think I'm going to give me a vintage. That's hilarious. Almost there. <laughs> oh, see, this is the, this is where it's like really hard to sort through stuff. Yeah. So you really, really have to kind of have. Right, you either are in this mode. But a lot of plastics. Yeah, it's not stuff that you're really looking for anyways. Looking through the glassware can be tricky too because it all looks the same. So it's really hard. I mean, unless it jumps out at you like a color like that, it's kind of hard to. Sometimes the stems, if that's interesting, I don't, you know, that's cheap, but. But it can kind of jump out at you if it's, if it's a little more unique. These are kind of cute. Yeah. Interesting little basket. That's true. I always say that every year. Mm -hmm. First the toast, then the roast. Happy host. Happy host. This is I feel the, like these are always thrilling. Like there's these are always. Oh, it has great some for weird, but then it has some like Finger Lake Association of annual annual tournament. I think these are always so really great for styling flowers. Oh, so yes. If you do like, like a nice dog, low, you know, arrangement. low arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, Very pretty. I love that idea. This has a stamp, Paul Revere Productions. I mean, that's definitely an antique, right? Yeah. Or at least somewhat. Yes. Yeah. At least vintage. Either plated, yeah. This is the aisle where they just put all of the extra <laughs> random stuff. I don't think I'm going to get it because I already have one. Like this, kind of. Mm -hmm. This is kind of cute, Jordan. Not seeing any good, not seeing any good lighting. Mm. Wooden beds are prolific, but like if you if you painted this on, in a high gloss lacquer, you know, like a bright red. Yeah, that could be cute. So cute. Sometimes. And sometimes you can find a really good frame, even if the art's bad. You can find a good frame, and then you can obviously replace the art. We didn't find anything there, so we're going to head to the next place. I think we're gonna go to a consignment store. No, no, I think we might go to an antique store next, yeah. This is a good example of a very stuffed. Okay, so we just pulled into a parking lot of an antique store. I think we're gonna go in. It's like a very crusty antique store. I think if you guys go antiquing a lot, you'll know like sometimes there's the slightly nicer ones that are like bigger and a little more <laughs> clean maybe. <laughs> this one's a very crusty one, which I will say are actually sometimes mm -hmm. my favorite ones mm -hmm. because you can find the best stuff for the cheapest price. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go in. I think a lot of the same rules apply for when you are antique shopping. I think the biggest difference for me when I'm antique shopping, one of my biggest tips is to always, always, always haggle on the price. I know some people are comfortable doing that, but when you're at a Goodwill, you can't really do that. But when you're in an, at an antique store, you a lot of times have the ability to offer what you think is fair or a lower price for a particular item. 
especially if you have a little bit of knowledge about what the item might be worth or whatever. Um, even if it's just a few dollars off or whatever. This is one of these places it's called thrift in like it has a letter like in instead of and and so like <laughs> places that name themselves things like that are maybe just a little bit lower brow. Yeah. And <laughs> in, general. Not, in general. Which I think then you can get really good you deals. You can get good yeah. deals and you yeah. can haggle a little bit and be like, listen, I'm going to take this. I'll take this today, right mm -hmm. now, cash, mm -hmm. if you give me, mm -hmm. you know, 25% off or mm -hmm. whatever. So I think that's one of my biggest tips for antique shopping. I think yeah. keep an open mind. You're just like, and also dig. Will, yeah, dig through stuff, move stuff around. Don't be afraid to like really get in there and move <laughs> stuff around because like, Unlike a Goodwill, it's not all going to be laid out mm -hmm. on a shelf for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You really have to kind of get in and move around and move stuff around. Um, I don't know. Do you have any Yeah, I think I'm I also am always looking for shape mm. and material. Like, those are my two, mm -hmm. you know, especially because with wood pieces. Because it's so and, crowded. Yeah. You have to, like, really, like, keep your eyes peeled mm -hmm. for, like, something specific. Yeah, and maybe give yourself a limit. And, like, I think you you know when, you're sen when your sensor senses are overwhelmed. overwhelmed. When you're, like, you have sensory overload. So. I'd be like, I'm going to spend 20 I'm minutes in here. If I can't find anything, it's fine. You don't need to spend your entire day. Yeah. Because then you'll just be disappointed if you do go through everything and you don't find anything. So we're going to yes. head in and see what we can find. Outside of your house. Where? Right here. Already off the bat. Yeah. I'm, like, very at attracted to old tools. Oh I don't God. know why. But I also love this. Yep. Already. Well, I don't like the glass part, but I like the iron. All these wooden pieces are really pretty. Do you think they put this stuff out every day? It's a pretty old chairs. This is just these are really cool. Shine them up. You know? Do a new, you could do a new like yep. covering on yep. the, These are sweet little wicker the little wicker pieces. things. Yeah, like that's that. really trendy right now. I've seen this headboard on that? Facebook. Yeah. The, the vintage antique toys, you never know if they're going to be like safe or not. really crowded in here. Aww. So it's hard to move around. Oh my gosh, I love that. I think I have some of those. Mm -hmm. Really pretty. It's a good point. Yeah, the lighting might not work. So you just know you need to factor that in. Hey, look, fabric. Paper can be the prettiest wrapping paper. <gasps> yes, uh, for, sure, for sure. Oh my gosh. I know. It's also just good inspo for like pattern. Hologram. It's like shiny. Look it's really you, cool. You and Eric. Oh my gosh, look at the uh -huh. dog. Oh. 
That's really cute. Oh, cool. Okay, so we just left another Goodwills. We've been to two Goodwills so far, and honestly, neither of them have been great. Um, we really didn't find anything. I got one little set of glasses, that's it. Jordan didn't find anything. Um, but we were trying to be very picky and follow a lot of like things that we talked about. Um, so anyways, we've done that, and then we went to an antique store, and now we are heading to some consignment stores. So that's kind of like the priciest of the shops that we're gonna be going to, the most curated. Um, and when we get there, we can kind of talk through some of the things that we like to look out for when we go there. But yeah, that's where we're headed now. Okay, so we are in front of the first consignment store that we're going to go to now. Like I said, Ago, we did not have a ton of luck at the Goodwills, but that's okay. That just happens literally. That's like one of the things you have to be prepared for. Yeah. So we're going into this place called Carriage House now, and we're going to see what we can find. I feel like consignment stores, because they're already a lot more, I have like a really, there's a really strong whiff of weed right now. <laughs> um, because consignment stores are already curated to some extent, there's a lot less digging that you kind of have to do to get to, or at least to be able to see what's there. Like, mm -hmm. it's usually organized to some extent. Um, so I would say for me, the rules, it's like the same stuff. Um, but I think unlike the thrift stores, you can also haggle too, right? Wouldn't you say? I mean, I don't, but I would love to see you do it. <laughs> Let's see it happen in real life. I, I would say that you can. I'm that type of person. Um... What would what else would you say keeping an eye out for at a consignment store? I mean, you're just gonna pay. You're paying for a little bit more curation, and mm -hmm. so you have to. That's why part of me is yes. Like, it's more. It's gonna be more pricey because you're paying for that. Yeah, the fact that someone went to a thrift store and yes. probably thrifted this. Yes, you're paying for somebody's time, <laughs> and now it's there. So yeah, yeah, we're gonna go in and we're gonna see what we can find, and hopefully we find some good stuff because we haven't had a ton of luck. So. <laughs> Yeah, so you can tell they've got really high quality. Like this table is so beautiful. I'm actually looking for a new dining room table. I love these bunnies. Look at this. <gasps> wow. I love this too. <laughs> this little settee. So obviously, I feel like with this place, they've got really, really good stuff. Highly curated, yet it is pricey. So I would even I wouldn't even consider this thrifting. This would be like your antiquing, your yeah. Full on antiquing. I would say. This is the kind of place that I'm looking for. Wow. <gasps> Look at this ottoman. This is my dream ottoman. Wow. Beautiful. Designers, interior designers come here mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. source antiques for their clients, I feel like. Yeah. Because if you purchase, if you purchase it about 20%, 20%, 20%. Oh my gosh, look at this with the little tiny. So much pretty stuff. There is some pretty stuff here, but that's something. It's worth your time to me. So, like, depending on the price. I love this pillow. This chair with the little cherries. I love this couch. Love, love, love. Oh my gosh, these pillows. Is it old? I can't tell. I think it is, but it looks like... Well, look how beautifully curated yes. the whole space is. It. It's like set up like mm -hmm. an actual vignette. The color mm -hmm. that they've painted it, like the whole thing mm -hmm. is just so pretty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. 
four fifteen. Wow. Not near with that brown, but like that's worth it. It's really cool. That. Yeah, so that's the course. This thing itself, like the bench itself, oh is so epic. Oh, no. and oh, this is a great booth. <laughs>